On this week's Nesson Patriots podcast, we will preview the upcoming 2019 NFL Draft by running a seven-round mock draft for the Patriots. Hello and welcome to the Nesson Patriots podcast. I am Doug Kide. Joined as always by Zach Cox. Zach, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Doug. I am ready for this draft to to finally arrive. Honestly, it feels feels like every year this pre-draft process just gets longer and longer and longer. Even though it doesn't, and even though with the Patriots it's it's shorter than most other teams because they have a month full of playoff games after after most teams are already kind of done for the offseason, but just feels like it takes so long and this analysis it, it, it basically just feels like we're at the point where we're just kind of spinning in circles at this point so I'm very excited for this this first round to, to, to finally kick off on uh, on Thursday night yeah I am too and it does feel like it, it takes a very long time and actually I'm curious to know when past NFL drafts happened because it felt like at some point it got it got pushed back I might be 100% wrong about that I'm, I'm researching this as I talk uh, but yeah, it's just such a long process. It, it takes what it's basically almost it's a month and a half between the start of free agency and the draft, which is a very long time when there's really not that much happening or going on. It looks like I am wrong about that. It's always been right around this time, which I guess makes sense because this is right around the time when teams you know, start practicing and running OTAs and everything. But it does look like in 2000, it was April 15th. So it was a little bit earlier okay. um, back then. Yeah, back when it was, you know, over the weekend rather than on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And personally, I wish it would go back to being a two-day event over the weekend. But, um, yeah, I mean, it starts off on Thursday. Today is Tuesday for those who might not be listening on the day that this comes out. Uh, so we're really just kind of getting our, our last preparations in, kind of studying some guys in the first or second round that maybe we, we haven't looked at before this time. But for this podcast, we will be doing a seven-round mock draft on FanSpeak's On The Clock Mock Draft Simulator, just to kind of go through some of the possibilities for the Patriots uh, when they are sitting there with a 32nd overall pick. Uh, Through this site, you can't do trades. I think that we all kind of assume that the Patriots will probably make some trades in this draft. I think that a lot of people assume because the Patriots have 12 picks in the draft that they will definitely trade some of those picks. But you do have to keep in mind that four of those picks are right there at the very end of the seventh round. So the Patriots are basically going to treat those picks like they're getting a head start on the undrafted free agency period. So you almost can't even treat those players like they're seventh round picks. They're basically going to be the players that the Patriots would have signed as undrafted free agents. But... They need to. They can get out ahead of it and make sure that other teams can't snag those players before they get a chance to sign them. Exactly. But even just just given the Patriots' history, you have to imagine that there'll be at least a few trades coming in this draft. I mean, they they've made plenty of trades when they had far fewer draft picks, and and I know that there are some kind of areas of the draft where they're they're more. They what do they have five picks on? Uh, five of their twelve picks are on day two right now and yes. then on day three it's a little bit lighter I know they they don't like picking in the fifth round but I'm sure they would love to add another fourth rounder or two so I'm, I'm sure there will be there will be some trades at some point in this draft but yeah like you said I think that's a, a kind of aspect of this this draft pool that people aren't really kind of taking into account yeah and if they do trade down for number 32 overall you would probably expect them to pick up a future pick as mm-hmm. part of that because I wouldn't expect them to add picks I could see them moving up and down the board but I can't really imagine them taking more than 12 players in this draft, so I would imagine that if someone's offering to to trade with the Patriots at that number 32 spot, that they would want maybe a future first or something in that deal. Uh, There's also the possibility that the Patriots could trade up if a player starts to fall, whether that's a quarterback or a pass rusher or a tight end. Um, I'd say that the chances of that happening are lower, but if a player at a position where the Patriots feel like there's not a lot of depth in this draft does start to fall. And I guess defensive end might be, you know, a possibility there of someone like Cleveland Farrell, the Clemson defensive end, just because there's pretty much a major drop off between the first round defensive ends and maybe the second and third round defensive ends. And I do like some of those players on day two at defensive end, but there's a pretty massive difference between say, you know, Cleveland Farrell and Anthony Winovich or uh, LJ Collier or some of these other, you know, 
edge type players who the Patriots would be getting on the second day of the draft. Definitely, the the makeup of these of these position groups in this draft is is pretty interesting. When you see something like wide receiver, where there will be a few people, a few players that go on day one, but day two is supposed to be the really kind of sweet spot for that position group. So it probably wouldn't be worth the Patriots' while to to trade up to to draft a wide receiver in the first round when there are a dozen that they could get on day two that are kind of if not right at that level, maybe just a tick below that. But then there are some other groups like like maybe defensive tackle or defensive end where they're really kind of the, the meat of that of that draft class is up near the top. So if they want to uh, kind of snatch one of those guys, they might have to move up a little bit. And you can make cases for almost every position on the Patriots as far as a need goes. At quarterback, uh, they need someone to eventually take over for Tom Brady as starting quarterback. At running back, that's probably one of their lowest needs. But... Maybe they want to start preparing for, you know, life without James White at some point by taking a pass, catching back. Wide receiver, it's obvious. Their number two right now is Demarius Thomas, who's coming off of Torn Achilles. So they definitely need a wide receiver. Definitely need a tight end after Rob Gronkowski retired. Offensive tackle, they have almost no depth behind the starters there with Isaiah Wynn and Marcus Cannon. Isaiah Wynn's also not a sure thing since he didn't play as a rookie. Guard, Joe Tooney is a free agent next season. Uh, based on what I'm hearing, it's very unlikely that the Patriots will sign him to a long-term deal before he hits free agency. So they will probably be competing with other teams once he does hit free agency in 2020. Patriots are pretty much all set at center for now. Uh, defensive tackle, they don't really have a third player there behind Mike Pennell, uh, Lawrence Guy, and Adam Butler. Defensive end, they lost Trey Flowers in free agency, so they could use a piece there. Linebacker Kyle Van Noy and Dante Hightower aren't guaranteed, I guess, to come back. And Elaine and Roberts aren't guaranteed to come back in 2020. They're all in contract years, correct? Or Dante Hightower's not, but Van Noy and Roberts I believe so, yeah. are entering contract years. Um, safety, there's really not a whole lot of depth behind the three guys up top there with Nate Ebner, Devin, Devin McCourty, and Deron Harmon. And, or did I say Nate Ebner? Yeah, Patrick, Patrick Chung. Patrick Chung. Chung and McCourty also are getting up there in age. And then cornerback, we don't view that as a major need, but... I think the Patriots might, and I actually wouldn't be surprised if they used a first-round pick on a cornerback. So you can basically go across the board, and there's needs everywhere. Yeah, it's and just with given the Patriots' draft history, it seems like going into a draft, the thing, the the position that everybody kind of identifies as as their need, it almost kind of lessens the the chances of them actually drafting that player. Like now, if the if the Patriots draft Irv Smith in the first round. I'm almost going to be a little bit surprised just because because so many people have been saying, oh, that's the obvious pick. The Patriots very rarely make the obvious pick. I mean, very few people were talking about Isaiah Wynn and and Sony Michelle as potential Patriots first round picks last year, and and that's the way that they went. So Bill Belichick always kind of he, he, it's very difficult to predict what the Patriots are going to do in, at any given point in the draft. Let's get into this mock draft. And I actually just saw a spoiler as to which players are available. And one of these is very interesting. Uh, and that's that Rashawn Gary is still available for us at the 32nd overall pick. Uh, in the draft rankings that we used, he's the ninth best player. But news has come out that Rashawn Gary is dealing with a torn labrum and that teams believe that he could push that off for the season and then have it during the offseason. But I still feel like this could force him to fall down the board. And it's it's just coincidental that this happened because these mock drafts are, are basically by you know chance that all these players come off the board. It, Rashawn Gary's not still sitting here because of the labrum news. It was just a, a chance happening. But going other, over some of the other players that are available right here, Daniel Jones, the quarterback out of Duke, I think that would be possible here at 32nd overall. Wide receivers, we've still got Marquise Brown, A.J. Brown, and Keel Harry, Hakeem Butler. Uh, tight end, Irv Smith Jr., who we just mentioned, is still available. Offensive tackle, Caleb McGarry, the offensive tackle out of Washington. Um, and Dexter Lawrence, defensive tackle out of Clemson. I think that's another distinct possibility there at number 32 overall for the Patriots. Uh, no great defensive ends are, are left here. No great uh, linebackers. At cornerback, Joe Juan Williams, cornerback out of Vanderbilt. I think that's another possibility for the Patriots at 32nd overall. He's still sitting there. And there's a lot of great safeties here. N- Nasir Adderley, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, Jonathan Abram, Juan Thornhill. So what are you thinking here for the Patriots? I'm thinking here, if, out of, out of the, the players that are available, I probably would go Dexter Lawrence here. Maybe maybe Rashawn Gary, if he does fall this far, the Patriots could kind of 
jump on that, but I have seen some people that are, are, are not particularly high on Rashawn Gary. I know Pro Football Focus isn't, aren't really huge fans of him. They've been writing a lot during the pre-draft process that, that Chase Winovich was actually the more productive player and kind of the, the, the player who projects as, as the better pro of the two kind of Michigan um, defensive line prospects in this draft. Maybe if, if that guy falls that far, that would be the, the move for the Patriots, but I, I don't know. I can't see Rashawn Gary being available at number 32. I don't know. With, with the torn labor news, I think that anything's kind of yeah. possible there. Um, I mean, Rashawn Gary is an interesting player because he was not the most productive pass rusher at Michigan, but he's got, he was a great run defender for Michigan. The Patriots definitely value that more than most teams do. Uh, he's a fantastic athlete. He's got ideal size for the position. He's six foot four, 276 pounds. He's got 34 and one eighth inch arms, ran a four, five, eight, uh, had, had good vertical, a good broad jump. Um, I do think that if he's sitting there, the yeah. Patriots would take him. Yeah, I, so, I, I agree with that. And we, we should note that the Patriots haven't really shied away from, from players with injury concerns no. in recent years. If you, if you want to mention uh, Sony Michelle or, or even Easley, Dominic Easley going Malcolm back Mitchell. then, Malcolm Mitchell. So, uh, yeah, I, I think if he's there at 32, let's, let's give it to him. Let's Rashawn Gary to the Patriots. So that's a quality first round pick already. We're we're doing you know better than I expected in this. Um, and, so. and we should mention that these things are if for people who haven't used fan speak uh, mock draft. I guess we could just explain it really quickly. It's just basically a mock draft simulation where yeah. where you choose which team you want to draft for. You choose which kind of big which kind of player rankings big board you yeah, want to go we're off using of. cbs aggregate for a draft board and, and then the the computer basically drafts everybody except for your team so it basically it makes a it, it's a little bit kind of more i don't know i don't think scientific is the word but it's a little better than just saying okay the patriots are going to draft this guy in the first round this guy in the second round without really kind of having the the, the, it lets you show what players might be available. At that yeah, position. for sure. And we did choose the difficult setting so that you know more players at the top of the board do come off quicker. Which is probably right. I did a couple of, sure. the, of the other ones, and, and TJ Hawkinson was available at number 32 <laughs> yeah. basically four times in a row. And, which, I mean, yeah, like it's, it's weird that Rashawn Gary was sitting there for us, but it works out with the, with the torn labor news, like we said. So now we're sitting here at 56 overall. That's Patriots' top second-round pick. Uh, some of the more appealing players out there, some of the safety, John, Jonathan Abram, Juan Thornhill. Uh, the players who just went off the board, Joe Juan Williams went to the Texans, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson went to the Texans. So uh, positions that we would be looking at right now, quarterback, based on this simulation, I think that we can wait on drafting either Ryan Finley or Will Greer, I'll Tyree Jackson, that. Jared Stidham. We can get one of those guys a little bit later on. Uh, one guy I'm looking at that I think is really appealing is Hakeem Butler, the wide receiver. He's a guy that... The, the draft scouts love, but he's not quite as high on the draft forecaster rankings where, you know, the, the, the people who actually talk to teams don't have him ranked quite as high as some of the draft scouts. But So that means that Hakeem Butler very well could be available there for the Patriots at 56 overall. Uh, we've got some tight ends available, Irv Smith Jr., Jay Sternberger, Dawson Knox. Um, offensive tackle, it would be a reach to get someone like Max Sharping at this point. Um, let's see here. Defensive line, LJ Collier is still available. I think that would be an interesting pick. Jalen Ferguson out of Louisiana Tech. We just took a defensive end, but um, I think that it's possible that he would be there at this point. And then as far as safeties go, like I said, Jonathan Abram, Juan Thornhill, Deontay Thompson, Amani Hooker. Uh, what are you thinking here? I really like Jonathan Abram as a player. I think he's got a lot of uh, a lot of Patrick Chung in his game. He's a, a a very kind of aggressive downhill safety that I think the the that would definitely fit in well with the Patriots system, especially given that Patrick Chung is is going to be 32 this season. He's coming off a broken uh, broken forearm in the Super Bowl, so we don't exactly know even when he's going to be or whether he's going to be kind of fully healthy mm-hmm. in time for Week One, but. In this scenario here, I think I like Irv Smith if he falls down to number 56. I think that's good value for a guy that a lot of people are discussing as kind of a, a potential late round, first round pick. And, and even after getting Austin Safarian Jenkins um, earlier this offseason as kind of a, a, a solid stopgap in there where it would kind of makes the need for tight end not absolutely dire, he's a guy that's dealt with a million injuries in his career and you can never really kind of 
you, you don't really know what you're going to get from him, whether he's going to be on the field. So I, I, I think I like um, – I like addressing tight end here. I, I like Irv Smith in this spot. What are, what are you thinking? Yeah, I was I like I like Akeem Butler, like I said, but I do like Irv Smith. There's no guarantee that Jay Sternberger will be there at number sixty four overall. So if a guy like Irv Smith is sitting there for them, I do think that he is a better player than Sternberger. I think he's a better blocker. So let's go with Irv Smith here at number fifty six overall. Um, let's see who else is. Jonathan Abram just went off the board. Juan Thornhill just went off the board. Um, Hakeem Butler just went off the board. And how we, we just mentioned bef- that, that Joan Williams and, and Chauncey Gardner-Johnson went right before the Patriots' last pick. I could definitely see that being a scenario where the Patriots will look to trade up two or three spots yeah. if a guy like that is maybe sitting there right, right at that spot ahead of them. For sure. So now uh, a lot of the players, obviously, that we were just talking about are still available here at number 64 overall. I think we could probably wait a little bit still to get a wide receiver. Uh, the Patriots have another pick at number 73 overall. I think that, you know, one of these guys, whether it's Andy Isabella, McCole Hardman, or Miles Boykin, one of those guys will probably be sitting there at number 73 overall. Agreed. Might be a slight reach to get one of those guys at this point. Um, uh, offensive tackle, that still might be another reach to get someone like Max Sharping or Titus Howard. Um, Let's see who else is available here. This is kind of tough. There's the board didn't exactly fall perfectly for the Patriots yeah. here. I would say, I think that someone like L.J. Collier is interesting in this spot. Uh, it's a slight reach, but I think that that might allow the Patriots to kind of bulk up Adam Butler a little bit. Maybe he can be your third run stuffing t- defensive tackle. Then you bring in a guy like L.J. Collier who can play. You know perhaps on the edge on on first and second down, uh, move inside on third down. Of course, that also kind of describes Rashawn Gary, so that might be it might be a little bit redundant to bring in a guy like L.J. Collier um, as far as other defensive linemen go. Um, there's no ideal fit, I'd say, as kind of that, that big 320-type pound guy. What are you thinking here? There, there are a couple options here. I like a few of these safeties, but I think it's a little bit of a reach for, for someone like Armani Hooker or um, uh, uh, Darnell Savage or some of these guys that are available. Um, the, the wide receivers that you mentioned, I, I do like. Um, I like J.J. Arcega Whiteside, too, mm-hmm. um, as more of kind of a, a big-bodied outside jump ball guy who, whose routes are actually – a lot better than you would expect from from a guy who does play his position, but but yeah, you're right. This doesn't really break uh, in a particularly positive way for for the Patriots. Jay Sternberger is still on the board here, so they probably would have been better off passing on on Irv Smith and maybe scooping up Sternberger here. But I don't know. I mean, I think maybe maybe Collier. Maybe um, did you say Collier's still on the board? Yeah, Collier's yeah. still on the board. I, Darnell Savage is interesting too. There was some rumors that he could go first round. Um, Patriots definitely do need kind of a a speedier safety maybe Mm -hmm. because Patrick Chung, we've kind of been looking at players who could fill in for Patrick Chung in the future, especially since he's got, um, you know, the the arm injury or the, yeah, what was it, the broken arm. But Devin McCourty's on the last year of his contract, and you've got Duran Harmon to fill in there, but I think that you do kind of start to need, need to start looking at someone who might be able to play that deep high safety role. So, I don't know. I think that Savage is interesting. Collier is interesting. Um, I mean, and the Patriots are definitely aren't shy of uh, shy about drafting safeties. Maybe a little bit higher than other people might uh, might project them in the draft. So that's always an option. Let's take Savage. Let's right, go let's with Savage. It. Great name too. I haven't I haven't taken him in a mock draft at this point. So I think it's kind of a it's not a player that I've really been looking at. But I think it's pretty good value here at number sixty four overall. He's the second sixty second overall uh, as far as CBS's rankings go. So so far, just to recap, uh, we got Rashawn Gary in the first round, Irv Smith Jr. and Darnell Savage in the second round. And now uh, the Patriots' next pick is at number 73 overall. Let's see who's coming off. McCole Hardman just came off the board. J.C. Arcega Whiteside just came off the board. L.J. Collier just came off the board. Um, so now it's a little tough. We, we could take Andy Isabella here, a uh, wide receiver out of UMass. We could start looking at a quarterback. Ryan Finley and Will Greer are still available. Uh, no guarantee that they will still be there. Uh, at the 96th overall pick. But right now, I'm probably looking at wide receiver and thinking about Andy Isabella here. I, I agree with that. I, I've kind of 
convince myself, just because we've talked about uh, Andy Isabella for so long as a potential Patriots pick, that he will end up getting maybe slightly overdrafted by another team just because he's been able to get so much kind of buzz around him, especially after he, he put on a pretty strong performance at the, uh, at the scouting combine a couple months ago. But yeah, I, I'd say if he's available at this point, I, I, I definitely like that pick. Yeah, I think that that's a quality pick number, there at number 73 overall. So we've got Andy Isabella filling that wide receiver need. We can come back to that again later. But I do think it at least helps that they've got Demarius Thomas in there at this point as well to, to possibly, you know, fill that need a little bit. Um, some interesting players are coming off the board. Jermaine, Jermaine Pratt, who I thought was a potential linebacker fit, is off the board. Anthony Nelson, defensive end fit, just came off the board. Um, Christian Miller, another defensive end fit, came off the board. So it's actually 97 overall that the Patriots have their next pick. Um, so at this point, I think that quarterback and offensive tackle are probably their biggest remaining needs. What are you thinking? Uh, I, I, I agree with that. defensive line, too. Um, defensive line, too. I, I think they need to get a, a tackle at some point that, that wouldn't just be considered kind of a developmental tackle right. that could maybe play in a couple of years. So I think this is – so that we're still in the third round here, right? Yeah. Right at the end of the third round. I think this is a, a decent place to take Max Sharp. And I, I agree with that. That's the player that I was just looking at. I mean, I could be convinced on, on Will Greer, uh, who's still on the board, or Ryan Finley, but I do think that – that right now offensive tackle is more of a need just because, like you said earlier, they really have no backup offensive yeah. tackles right now. The backup offensive tackles they have on their roster, was it Cole Croston, Riker Matthews, yep. Dan Skipper, and Cedric uh, Lang. Yeah. They have uh, a total of, of six NFL games of, of experience between the four of them. So yeah. there's really no sure thing in there. And then even with Isaiah Wynn, not a sure thing that he's going to be a kind of fully ready to go this season or be if, if he can actually compete at the NFL level because we've never really seen it. So long long story short, I, I agree with the, the Max Sharpening pick And, there. I mean, just looking at the quarterbacks right now, you've still got Ryan Finley, Will Greer, Tyree Jackson, and Jared Stidham all on the board. Patriots pick next at 101 overall. So they are guaranteed to get one of those players with their next pick. Absolutely. As far as, you know, dropping off after Max Sharping, I don't really like these players quite as much as him. So, yeah, Max Sharping's the pick there at number 97 overall. And all those quarterbacks are still there. So I'm leaning Will Greer here. Um, I like Ryan Finley also, but it, it's kind of a, a bit of a coin flip between those two players for me. Yeah, I think I, I think I would prefer Will Greer of the two. They're kind of different players. I think Will Greer is more of a uh, kind of a take some chances gunslinger type, and, and Ryan Finley is he's been described as as a game manager. He's more of a conservative player. Definitely going to be a guy that that maybe won't take as many shots downfield, but maybe is a little kind of more protective with the ball. But I, I, I like Will Greer a lot. I like I like my guy Brett Rippon later in the draft yeah. if they don't scoop up a quarterback at this point. But I, I think if Will Greer is on the board at this point, I think that's a uh, I think that's a very good pick for the Patriots. Yeah, Finley and Greer are both among the most accurate quarterbacks in the in the draft. Greer's got a slightly bigger arm. He threw 59 miles per hour at the combine. Ryan Finley threw 57 miles per hour. Uh, Ryan Finley's got more of the prototypical size. He scored a 38 on the Wonderlick, mm. which is pretty amazing. Will Greer, I think, was around the 25 mark. But, yeah, there's just something about Will Greer that I, that I like, and the Patriots have shown more reported interest in Greer at this point. Uh, Patriots and Finley haven't really been tied to each other, but, I mean, maybe that could also mean that they're more high on him. The Th- thing to note about both of these guys, too, is that they'll both be 24 or even 25 when the season starts. So these yeah. are two older prospects who mm-hmm. theoretically probably wouldn't need as much sort of seasoning as, right. as drafting a, a guy who's 21 or 22. So just something to keep in mind when you're when you're evaluating these quarterback prospects. Yeah, I think that someone like, well, definitely Tyree Jackson, but also even... Uh, Jared Stidham both would need a little bit more work I think from the Patriots coaching staff so we're taking Will Greer here Will Greer here at number 101 overall Patriots now don't have another pick until 134 overall so a lot of players here will be coming off the board um, in the fourth round and then after the fourth round Patriots don't have another pick after that until 205 overall in the sixth round so uh, this fourth round pick the Patriots have here is pretty important I think just because you probably aren't going to be getting nearly as high quality of a player with the Patriots next pick there in the sixth round. Since Absolutely. there's such a major drop off from 134 all the way to 205. So if there's like if there's a need to fill, then you want to take that there in that fourth round pick. 
um, because a six round pick probably won't be contributing in the first year that he's that he's on the team. So definitely, and we we've just seen how how successful the Patriots have been at picking finding quality players in the fourth round. Yeah. I mean, they found James White in the fourth round. They found Trey Flowers in the fourth round. They've been really good at finding these kind of hidden gems that, that maybe some other teams are, are discounting for whatever reason and turning them into uh, into quality players, if not full-blown stars. There was a run on quarterbacks after uh, we took Will Greer, Ryan Finley went off the board, Tyree Jackson went off the board, Jared Stidham went off the board. So definitely smart to take Will Greer when we had the chance. Uh, so sitting here at... 134 overall uh, remaining needs I think they, they've got the defensive end there in Rashawn Gary number one so still probably need a defensive tackle even though Rashawn Gary could potentially kind of fill both of those spots because he's kind of a bigger player um, but definitely still looking at defensive tackles I think they should be looking at probably another wide receiver potentially in this spot um, and then maybe a linebacker so as far as linebackers go not a lot of guys still left on the board that you know I I'm really high on Jelani Tovai, I think is definitely a possibility in this spot. So that's a player that I'm kind of looking at there as far as defensive linemen go. Daylon Mack, defensive tackle out of Texas A&M, I think that would be a, a decent pick there. He's He really is one of the bigger uh, defensive tackles in this draft. He's 336 pounds, ran a 5'140". Uh, so definitely a, a decent athlete there at defensive tackle could fill in on first and second down. And then wide receiver, uh, my guy David Sills is still available. That's kind of a guy that I've been penciling in there for that fourth round spot. I'm not sure what the Patriots' exact interest level there is in David Sills. Um, but they already got the smaller guy in Andy Isabella. They could take the bigger receiver, the, the red zone option there in David Sills. So those are the three guys that I'm kind of looking at there. What are you thinking? I think defensive tackle is probably the smart way to go yeah. um, in this in this scenario just because the Patriots, they do have a need there. They, they've probably got those two starting spots locked down yes. with, with Mike Pennell and, and Lawrence Guy. I think Mike Pennell was actually a really good kind of underrated pickup Definitely. this offseason. But like you said, after that, it basically just goes down to – to um, David Perry, um, to Dave, David Perry, the Frank Heron's still Frank kicking Heron. around, I believe, yep. and then and then Adam Butler, who is who's at at least currently more of just a kind of a, a third down sub rusher type guy. So I, I definitely think that that especially as you mentioned, where the next pick is going to be such a large drop yeah. off after this, I think defensive tackle is the way to go here. Yeah, because you could get a developmental wide receiver in the sixth round or seventh round. Um, I don't think that a sixth or seventh round defensive tackle would contribute uh, from day one. Or and looking at the wide receivers here available on the board, there, there's no, uh, other than David Sills, who you've obviously yeah. written about and, and talked about a lot, there's no kind of name that jumps out to me as a guy that I'm surprised is still on the board right. at this point. I know Gary Jennings, uh, the other West, West Virginia wide receiver, is a guy the Patriots have had some contact with during the uh, the pre-draft process, but he's a little bit further down on the board. So yeah. I, I think the, the smart play here is to uh, is to go defensive tackle. Yeah, and uh, the guy that I like there the most is Dalon Mack. I do like Tristan Hill, though, as well, Tristan out Hill, of UCF. John Kaminsky is a guy who's maybe a little bit lower on the board there. Yeah, John Kaminsky is really appealing just because he's, um, he's a fan fantastic athlete athlete for that position he's six foot five 290 pounds ran a four six nine forty with a 703 three cone and four three eight uh short shuttle basically if he was a linebacker then those are the you know the measurables the patriots would look at and he's you know three inches taller and, and 40 pounds heavier than a linebacker would be at that spot so um i don't know it, it but he's so much of a project i yeah. think that if you're looking for I, him to fill in from day one... I think you might want a bigger body in there, too. For uh, sure. Just with the needs that they have right now, with, with no Malcolm Brown and no Danny Shelton, at least at the moment. Uh, I think it would be beneficial to have kind of a more more of a, more of more beef in there than, than someone like Comiskey. You know what? Let's go Tristan Hill in this spot. I was leaning towards Daylon Mack at first, but I think that Tristan Hill actually probably was the, the more kind of dominant player in college. He's only 305, but you can bulk him up a little bit. Ran a 504-40, 7.73 cone, 4.38 short shuttle. That 4.38 short shuttle is kind of ridiculous for a 300-pound player. So uh, let's go Tristan Hill. Are you okay with that? Yep, let's do Here it. At 134 overall. I'm liking the way this is all shaking out so far. Um, obviously, it helps to get a guy like Rashawn Gary in the first round. But like we said, with the torn labrum, it's definitely possible that he could fall and if he's sitting there at number 32 overall, you know, 
then the Patriots can decide, all right, do we want him to play in 2019 or do we want him to get the surgery so that he can play from 2020 and beyond with no issue? But since they are already such a good team, they can take a chance like that on a player like Rashawn Gary uh, because he otherwise would definitely not be there for the Patriots at the 32nd overall spot. So as we mentioned before, going throughout the entire fifth round here, and this is a spot where there are a lot of players that I like, but since the Patriots haven't had a, a pick there, I haven't been mocking them to the Patriots. Guys like John Kaminsky or a defensive tackle like Greg Gaines out of Washington I think would be a really good fit for them. But since there is that big drop-off from number 134 to 205, there are so many players in that fifth-round area that I just haven't really paid that much attention to. Yeah, and the Patriots traditionally just hate fifth round picks for yeah. some reason they they even though they're good at them they are good at them but they seem to just kind of try to trade out of the fifth round whenever possible i feel like once let me look up their their draft pick history but they they take very few players in the fifth round even though they did land Juwan bentley in the fifth round last John year bentley, which marcus cannon matthew yeah. slater um yeah and dan coppin was a was a fifth round pick but yeah, they, I wouldn't be surprised if they trade back in there, but I think that that's a pick where they think that players in the fifth round and sixth round are basically valued the same, yep. um, and that some other teams might not view it that way. So yeah, some Patriots other teams might value a fifth round. Have taken more. two players in the fifth round since twenty eleven, wow. and they were uh, Juwan Bentley and Joe Cardona. Interesting. So, yeah, both guys who, uh, you know, Juwan Bentley is expected to stick around for a while. Joe Carter is definitely going to be around for a while. Uh, so Patriots are sitting here at 205th overall, and there's a few guys that are, are popping off to me right away. Uh, one of those is Tony Pollard, the running back out of Memphis. He played running back, wide receiver, uh, and kick returner at Memphis. He was really one of the best kick returners in the history of college football. I think he had seven kick return touchdowns during his career. And those on kind of limited opportunities as well. And he could sort of fill that spot that Cordero Patterson left void when he left uh, in free agency for the Chicago Bears. I think I'd also be looking at offensive tackle here. Uh, Trey Pipkins out of Sioux Falls is definitely an interesting player at 205 overall. Um, looking at some of these other guys here. Justin Hollins, defensive end out of Oregon. He's a fantastic athlete. Sutton Smith, another defensive end out of Northern Illinois, is kind of interesting. Uh, we haven't taken a linebacker for the Patriots yet. I'm not really so sure about a lot of these. Sion Takitaki, uh, he'll probably be coming off the board quite a bit earlier, but the fact that he's still there is interesting. Um, and then Will Harris, the safety out of Boston College, I think is an interesting player as well as if you're looking at safeties. I, I like Will Harris there. I, I like getting a uh, or I like getting a safety, but they do already have a safety earlier earlier on the board. I think these late rounds are you're absolutely going to see a running back yeah. and a linebacker, if mm-hmm. not multiple of each, um, just because they're not immediate needs for the Patriots, but they are positions that the Patriots like to add either through the draft or or through undrafted free agency. They've drafted multiple linebackers in three of the last four drafts, which yeah. is a little surprising to me, and all of them have been drafted on day three, so they love using these late-round picks to try to kind of find some diamonds in the rough at linebacker, and, and they've had some decent success lately with, with Juwan Bentley and, and, and then um, uh, Landon Roberts a couple of years before that. Um, but at this point, I, I, I like running back. I like Tony Pollard like in this Tony spot, Pollard, especially yeah. because they – one, they don't have a kick returner right now, and he just kind of has the, the multifaceted skill set that, that Bill Belichick really seems to love on his team. So I, I think Tony Pollard's a good pick here. Yeah, I'm going Tony Pollard as well. I think that is – it's also, I think, pretty realistic. Uh, we could take Sion Taki Taki, but it sounds like he's probably going to be off the board well before the sixth yeah, round. He seems to be rising a lot because a lot of pe- people still list him as kind of a, a seventh round priority free agent mm-hmm. type guy, but he seems to have really been – been elevating. There was a there was a report yesterday from uh, from Tony Pollian over at, at Draft Analyst that the Patriots are one of the favorites to draft Sione Takitaki, yeah. whatever that means. Um, but it, it does seem they're at least seem like they're at least showing some interest in him, and and they do tend to like uh, BYU linebackers. It's true. Yep. Uh, Harvey Longy and Kyle Van Noy both uh, have have been you know acquired by the Patriots in the past. So now Patriots are sitting here at number two thirty nine overall. Uh, Sione Takitaki is still there. Tyler Jones, the guard out of NC State, is still there. Um, is my guy Sutton Smith still there? Sutton Smith is still there. I don't know if you know much about Sutton Smith. But he's, he's very, very good athlete. Great athlete. 
was extremely productive at Northern Illinois. Um, I wrote, I don't know if the piece has come out yet or if I don't even remember what it was for, but Spoiler alert. he's, he's a guy that Bill Belichick might look at and say, similar to uh, Julian Edelman, all right, we're going to draft this guy as a football player yeah. and basically just figure it out later where he can actually play because okay. he's probably too small to be playing on the edge, but if he can play linebacker and then you can kind of fit him in as a blitzer on the edge sometimes on third down or whatever, then maybe that would work out. Uh, like you said, he's definitely a good athlete. Let me just look up his, his yeah. measurable. One, one of the top three cones at, at the combine, I believe, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, 6 feet, 233. Ran a four six nine forty six seven five three cone four three two wide short receiver shuttle. numbers. Yeah, six seven five three cone. I mean, yeah, you could you could say, all right, let's put you in a slot and with <laughs> with that uh, with that three cone. You know, it's probably not realistic, but um, at the very least, that sounds like a guy who could who could at least uh, contribute on special teams right away. For sure, yeah. and I mean, he's got a tremendous motor. Uh, these, like I said, are guys that you know they might sign as priority free agents if they didn't draft them, but. That's probably the guy that I'm leaning towards right now. Yeah, any, let's let's go with that. Any opposition there? I, I I like that pick. Um, yeah, there's not obviously there aren't a a ton of of options left at this point. And where are we? Late seventh round. Yeah. Uh, so now we're back on the board at two forty three overall. I mean, Sioni Taki Taki is still sitting say, there. Let's take let's take Taki Taki. Yeah, it's it's unrealistic, but I mean, if we're looking at this as a best case scenario for the Patriots, then. Uh, it would be pretty tough to to move away from Sioni Taki Taki. So let's go there too. Going back to back on you know edge players, kind of hybrid edge players, back on the board now at two forty six overall. Uh, we're gonna be really scrambling to write up all these picks there at the end of the draft. <laughs> um, let's just well, we didn't we haven't doubled up on a wide receiver yet again. Cody um, Thompson. Cody Thompson. Cody Thompson, great three cone time, very very productive Toledo, at, at Toledo. Yep. Broke his leg in twenty seventeen. Uh, which kind of uh, set him back a little bit. He didn't look quite as as fast and quick on the field in, yeah. in the tape that I watched of him. But then he came out of the combine. I believe he had the second or third best uh, three cone time yeah, of, short of four, any wide receivers. Three, uh, Thirty-eight and a half inch vertical, and that's at six one two hundred five four five seven forty. But Patriots a little more lenient on the yeah, forty the, late in the draft. This seems so. like a guy that the Patriots would love at at this point in the draft. Yeah, Cody Thompson two forty six overall, and now they've got one more pick here. Um, I think that we could be looking at a cornerback here. We could be looking at a guard here. Uh, Tyler Jones might be my pick in this spot. Uh, Tyler Jones, for those who don't know, he's a little bit undersized at 6'3", uh, 306, but he played left tackle at NC State, projected to move to guard. Very similar story to the one that uh, Joe Tooney had mm-hmm. coming out of NC State, where he was a, a, a undersized left tackle in college, moved to guard. Patriots do eventually need to have someone take over for Joe Tooney at that left guard spot, so he could be a candidate in there. Um, looking at some of these other guys. Do we have any uh, quality tight ends left on the board here? Um, mm. CJ Conrad, who's got... Does he have a heart issue or something? Yeah. Uh, Keenan guy, Brown Keenan out Brown of Texas still here. State. Trevin Wesco is a decent blocking option. Trevin Wesco, yeah. Uh, Zach Zentry out of Michigan is still available. Um, what are you thinking here? What are we thinking? I think either of those. Saquon Hampton, but we already took a safety. I already took a safety. I, I like the idea of, of doubling up on a tight end, um, but guard is is a, a decent concern because, like we said, with, with – uh, with Joe Tooney entering the final year of his contract. I think anybody you get at this point in the draft is going to be kind of a, a dart anyway. Let's go uh, it, Let's go Conrad. It's yeah. another guy who's got a medical concern. Um, I'd say that you probably have a better shot of convincing Tyler Jones to sign as a priority free agent just because the conversion was so successful with Joe Tooney than you might with a tight end since the Patriots did take Irv Smith so high. So let's take a tight end in this spot. I, my favorite guy is probably C.J. Conrad just because of the upside that he has there um, given the medical history. So Love it. Let's final do it. pick in the draft, we've got C.J. Conrad out of Kentucky and Tyler Jones did not get drafted. So that's our first call on the, uh, on the undrafted free agents there is to, uh, to call up Tyler Jones of NC State. Um, what, are, what are you thinking here? How did we do with this, uh, with this seminar mock? I think we did pretty good. So, so here's a, a quick rundown of, of our picks. We got in the first round we got Rashawn Gary. Second round, 
That's an A. That's an A. That's got to be an A. Irv Smith Jr. falling down to, to number 56. I think that's a, a great value mm-hmm. pick there as well. Uh, our our sixty four our number sixty four was a little bit of a uh, kind of a curveball a little bit of a curveball but I, I do think Darnell Savage like you said not a guy that I've actually looked at super closely mm-hmm. but but I know that he's um yeah he's been having had some good things written about him recently so I yep. think he's definitely a guy that that could fill a, a future need in there Andy Isabella at number seventy three I like that pick um, Max Sharping at number at number ninety seven you finally get the the, the left tackle that the Patriots or not left tackle but the tackle yep. in general that the Patriots need to get some depth in there he's a guy that I've I've seen kind of linked to the Patriots through a lot of these sure. these mock drafts and whatnot 101 Will Greer quarterback in there third round I think it's a it's a good value pick for for a guy that people are, are now discussing as maybe a, a potential end of the first round mm-hmm. pick um, I, I think of a lot of the quarterbacks that could be available at that point. I think that that's you can basically a solid. just like slot quarterback in their own. You know? <laughs> basically, like Jared basically. Stidham, Tyree Jackson, Will Greer, Ryan Finley. No matter who they're draft, who yeah. they draft, they're they're not going to see the field until 2020 at the very very earliest, unless yeah. something does happen to Tom Brady. Uh, you you want to handle the second half of the draft here? Yeah, for sure. Tristan Hill, there, number 134 overall. He's been a pretty dominant defensive tackle for UCF. Uh, certainly some upside there with him. Number 205 overall, Tony Pollard, running back, wide receiver, kick returner. Uh, if he makes a team, you can basically just have him fill in for that Cordero Patterson role. Not nearly as big as Cordero Patterson, but not as small as your typical uh, running back. He's six feet, he's 210 pounds, ran a 4'4", 140, seven second three cone. Uh, so definitely a good athlete. And he can be your kick returner from day one. You don't really have to worry about that position. Uh, number 239, bit of a project there in Sutton Smith. Very undersized, but he was extremely, he was prolific as a pass rusher at Northern Illinois. So we're actually doubling up on Huskies in this draft <laughs> with Max Sharping and Sutton Smith. Uh, Sione Takitaki at 243. Uh, you know, maybe a little bit unrealistic, but maybe he's a guy that they can take in the third or fourth round. And we're talking about the same type of thing there as kind of an edge player, a linebacker, maybe a bit of a project. But... Um, certainly someone who could potentially fill in for Dante Hightower or Kyle Van Noy in the future. 246 overall, we took our second wide receiver there in Cody Thompson. Uh, maybe like a big slot, maybe a Z receiver, another project the Patriots can, can kind of deal with in training he, camp. He was a big special teams guy, I think, in college yeah. too, so he's a guy that can contribute in there. And then 252, CJ Conrad. He was one of Pro Football Focus's most complete tight ends. He was there one of their one of the better blockers who also was a good receiver. Um, he's got some medical issues, so Patriots might just kind of have to draft him and see how that goes, kind of take a risk there. But it's with their last pick in the seventh round, and you're guaranteeing that you can get that guy rather than another team signing him as an undrafted free agent. So I think it's worth the risk to at least get him on your team to see what happens there rather than just, you know, uh, having him go off into free agency and then having someone sign. Agree. That's what the seventh round is for, especially if, if it plays out like this and the Patriots keep these picks. As you mentioned earlier, these guys are basically undrafted free agents anyway. It's just kind of getting a, a head start on them with the with the last 10 or 12 picks of the draft. For sure. So I think we did pretty well here. I think Patriots fans will be pretty happy with this. We'll, we'll kind of put it out to a poll there after we, we release the podcast. But any final thoughts on the on the draft uh, as we're kind of two days out at this point? I, again, I'm ready for it to, uh, to finally arrive. But, no, I think that there are just a lot of ways the Patriots – can go. It seems like they have more needs entering this draft than they have in a while, at least more kind of obvious immediate needs, especially in, in wide receiver, in tight end, in defensive line, in defensive end, uh, in quarterback for the future. It's not quarterback and safety, maybe not immediate, as immediate as those other ones, but there are a lot of, of holes on this team, I guess you could say, which is a little different for a team that just won the Super Bowl. Yeah. I feel like in previous years, the Patriots have been relatively well stocked returning following the year after after winning a Super Bowl so there are a lot of directions that they could go in the first round in the first couple rounds they have six picks on the first two days including uh, five on day two Mm -hmm. and nothing would really surprise me with that number 32 pick if they do keep it they don't need a a cornerback but they could take a cornerback they don't need a guard but if Chris Lindstrom from BC or one of these guys falls maybe they end up taking him Yeah, I, I just think there there are a lot of ways the Patriots can go in this draft, and it's going to be really difficult to 
to kind of predict actually what they're going to do until they do it. But I do think we'll see a, a decent amount of trades. You, do you think they make that number 32 pick? I do think they do. And my best guesses at this point for, those, for that number 32 overall pick, Clemson defensive tackle uh, Dexter Lawrence, Vanderbilt cornerback Joan Williams, Duke quarterback Daniel Jones, or West Virginia quarterback Will Greer. Those are my, my four best guesses at this point. You know, more than 48 hours out from the draft, things can change. Who knows who drops? Who knows who gets taken off the board before all these players? But those are my four picks that I'm just throwing out there, and I get no prize if they take one of those players, <laughs> and I probably get no prize if they don't take one of those players. So uh, I think that'll do it. Uh, draft starts Thursday at 8 p.m. We will be there at Gillette Stadium to cover it. We will be definitely doing a podcast on the days following the draft, maybe Monday or Tuesday. So look out for that. But definitely keep it on Nesson.com for all of your draft coverage. We will be writing up reactions to every pick. We'll be writing up every pick. Um, and follow us on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter at Doug Kide. Follow Zach on Twitter at Zach Fox Nesson because we will also be tweeting out a lot of thoughts on the draft in general. Uh, so I think that will do it for this week's installment of the Nesson Patriot Podcast.